All right, I'm unintentionally breaking this rant up into two parts because I didn't realize my camera would cut off after 10 minutes of recording. If you hear a purring noise, it's because my cat is in my lap. I'm now home, and yes, this is part two of my rant. Just a little bit of out loud thinking here about Donald Trump specifically. Let me divert my attention, and maybe yours, for just a moment and talk about Joe Biden. Joe Biden, according to new news from yesterday, had a pseudonym, which isn't technically new news. I've actually heard the pseudonym before, but now we know more. Robert L. Peters, that's right. So when he was vice president, he was sending out emails to people, foreign officials. And in those emails, his son, Hunter Biden, was CC'd. He was copied in as a recipient of the communications. So, despite all of Joe Biden's claims about a lack of communications with his son and his son's business partners, basically Joe Biden washing his hands of the weirdness entirely. There is obvious much more than met the eye. I mean, now there are things to meet the eye. There are paper trails, bank statements, documents, FBI files, whether it's the 1023, the FD 1023, or you tell me, whatever the IRS agents, the whistleblowers can provide, it just goes on and on and on. The corruption is clear. But, but Democrats get away with looking the other way because there is so much to look at on the other end of the political spectrum. I mean, every time news breaks about the Bidens and alleged corruption, alleged crimes, regardless of how obvious they may be, the Democrats can chalk it up to a conversation about weather and point in the other direction and say, oh, look at that guy. Another indictment is dropping. Of course, they're talking about Donald Trump. What I've been saying for a little while now, and hopefully my audio is much more clear in this part than in my last part. I had my hand over the microphone, I think, when I was driving and recording. But yes, I've been saying that Donald Trump is basically a walking, talking Democrat excuse. He is their reason to obfuscate anything that they are doing wrong. Anything. I'm not saying it's it's fair. There is clearly a double standard. Maybe even a triple or a quadruple standard. But the point remains. Because Donald Trump has been walking into so many rakes for so long. Because he wants to dominate the field in every way possible. He wants to run rampant through the field of dreams, of schemes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch part one, which is linked in the description box below this. <sighs> yes, he's their excuse. Not just their excuse to rail on him, but their excuse to rail on people like me, who see things the way he does in regards to policy, or at least most policies. It's because of his lack of leadership in so many ways, where he gives them so many examples of ignorance, of arrogance. Every time he steps on a rake, they say, Aha, look at that. He stepped on a rake. And even, even if you point out that the rake is only even there because they put it there in front of him, they say, he's a moron. He just walked into another trap. It's kind of true. He does it time and time and time again. And so while he's now suggesting that all of the other Republican candidates for president should drop out of the race and prop him up as the glorious, self-entitled, 
egotistical man, though I won't call him a maniac. I'll be nice. Uh, man that he is. He's also turning around and, well, he is attempting to sabotage, in a sense, the first Republican debate, which is next week. According to other news, which broke today, he is considering not only opting out of his participation, potential participation in said debate, he apparently wants to be interviewed by Tucker Carlson around the time of the debate. So on the one hand, he's saying, I don't want to participate in the debate because it's not even a competition. On, on the other hand, he's simultaneously saying, listen, I want to compete with the debate by going elsewhere so I don't have to answer questions from moderators or from anyone who is participating in the debate. And, and I want to, I want to sit down with Tucker Carlson formerly a Fox News employee, and I want to see if I can take the attention from the debate, away from the debate, have it all for myself. He wants all the glory for himself. He looks down on them. He looks down on you. He looks down on me. He does not listen. He does not learn. That's why I have turned the page on him. I still remain fair. In the case of his... Well, his cases, I call them like I see them, and I'm willing to change my mind at any time if someone can prove me wrong on something. I'll say, I believe him on that, or I don't believe him on that. I think that's the way we should respond to all politicians. They're just people. But they're politicians as well, which means they're even more corruptible, considering everything they're in the middle of whether they're in the middle of it because they stepped into it or because, well, it was simply thrown in front of them and they did not see it coming. And there's not really an excuse for that. Well, Donald Trump may not be one to make excuses technically since he's too busy exaggerating, but... I think he does lack some leadership qualities, and I think I think people who are following him too closely, well, they're gonna step on the same rake as he does. Or or they're just going to they're just going to be playing the victim right along with him as he continues to refuse to accept that he is losing or that he lost. Or maybe he simply needs to learn a lesson outside of whether or not he lost or won anything. I could talk about how Donald Trump lost his election and then Ron DeSantis won his election, talking about re-elections here, only for Donald Trump to act as though he's the winner and Ron DeSantis is the loser I, I could talk about the surge in the polls of Vivek Ramaswamy and how much more clear his message is, whether you agree with it or not, than Donald Trump's. I could talk about how Donald Trump has, has been so focused on bashing Ron DeSantis because of disloyalty that he has distracted his followers, his base, from the obvious fact that... Uh, members of Trump's own cabinet are running against him. His own vice president is running against him. People who he supported in the Senate, <laughs> Tim Scott, and other people, even Vivek Ramaswamy, who was supportive of Donald Trump. Now, they're all running against him, and they were closer to him than Ron DeSantis is, or at least was. And yet, Donald Trump is not using the same arguments against them that he is against Ron DeSantis. But that may change as other people jump ahead in the polls. I just think that ultimately, Donald Trump is not going to jump ahead of much of anything. He's this shiny object right now. And that's it. 